Hi, welcome to Parametric House. Uh, in this uh, kangaroo grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you how you can convert a hemisphere into a dual n-gon mesh using the tri mesh, which is really simple. But what we want to do is to planarize all the faces. And as you can see here, uh, all of the faces are not planar. We have some planar faces here. So at the end of this tutorial, we will learn uh, how to convert that into a planar mesh. So for example, if I bake this mesh here, uh, you can see that this is completely planar. For example, uh, this face is planar, which is an n-gon. Uh, so let's get started from scratch. What I want to do is start with a hemisphere, which is really easy to make if you want to make it in Grasshopper. You can go to surface, uh, make a sphere, and let's give this a radius. And also we can change the location of the center so now we can move it and also give it a radius uh, what we need here is the half part uh, the top part of this sphere so i'm going to go to surface uh, a great tool in utility is this isotrim tool component which you can uh, just extract a part of a nerve surface uh, but what you have to do is to reparameterize this and actually uh, what it does is that assume that this is the u direction of the sphere it's going to make it from 0 to 1 and there is also a v direction which is somehow like this this is also going to be from 0 to 1 so if we want to pick up the top parts what we have to do is to work with one of the u or v's uh, domain uh, we can go to the math a domain and pick up this construct domain 2 which is going to help us to uh, uh, add numbers for the u min u max v min and v max for example if i give this a number slider between 0 and 1 because we have reparameterized it turn this off if i give it to u you can see it's from 0 to 1 and now it's from 0 0.2 to 1 so here you can see that this is the u direction uh, we don't want to mess with the U, so what we have to do is to work with the V. Uh, so if I give it to the V and just increase that, that's going to be from this number to 1. You can see we can just extract a part of this sphere uh, as our project. Uh, we can just change that if we want part of it. Anyway, uh, now we have a part of the sphere. Assume that this is a dome we want to uh, planarize. Uh, the next part is to use the tri mesh. so I'm going to go to the mesh. A triangulation and use this tri mesh. give it to the geometry we want to make. Uh, obviously we have to define a length just to uh, say that the triangles are near this length so I'm just going to say 2.2 and give that to the length and increase that. I guess we have to increase it even more because it has lots of small triangles maybe this is fine okay so now what we want to do here is work with the dual uh, n-gon mesh so the triangulation is obviously a series of triangles uh, which we are not going to work here what we need here if I connect a mesh from the params menu to the dual and just turn this off is this mesh we're going to learn and focus on this kind of mesh so in this tutorial we're going to focus on the dual output of the tri mesh so as you can see here we don't have flat, uh, flat parts at the bottom we also uh, it's not guaranteed that these uh, are flattened as you can see here just we have some extrusions out here so the goal of this tutorial is how we can flatten these end gods uh, okay mm, what we need here is a mesh uh, which we can define because this is not going to work with kangaroo uh, we have to convert that into a triangle or, or a quad mesh so I'm going to reconstruct that but we're going to use this dual as the base uh, so what I want to do here is to go to the kangaroo plugin and for the main solver I'm going to use the zombie solver because it's going to give you the final results fast uh, and we don't have to wait to see the results or reset the simulation anyway so we can't give this as a mesh if you want to work with the kangaroo we have to convert that into triangular mesh 
what I've found is uh, the best way to do that is to go to the mesh and use a boundary, face boundaries. That's going to give you the end gons as you can see here. Okay. It's going to go as an output and we just extrude them uh, towards the center of that. Uh, okay, to find the centroid of these n-gons, we can simply go to curve and use this polygon center. And what we have to do is to extrude them towards this point. So just surface, uh, freeform, extrude to point and extrude these boundaries towards any of these points is okay because they are just slightly different center of the vertices, center of the edges and center of the area which it doesn't have so I'm going to just say center of the vertices for example is fine and as you can see here it produces 79 parts which are now going to be converted into a mesh that's exactly what we need uh, okay, to convert them into mesh, we can go to uh, mesh utility and use this simple mesh component. And I'm going to just use that. It's going to convert that from B rep to a mesh. And uh, we are also have to weld them together. As you can see here, if I zoom in on the mesh, it has like 18 vertices and six faces. I usually try to weld them before doing anything with kangaroo. So just go to utility and use this uh, utility mesh weld, which is a great tool. And as you can see here, the 18.6 is going to be converted into 7.6. And that is like cleaning the mesh and giving it like the minimal mesh possible. So that is exactly what we have to do before we go forward. Uh, okay, now that we have them, uh, we have to go to kangaroo and you, the first goal for the kangaroo is to show it. So we need this mesh to be seen as an output. I'm going to use this show and say I want the goal. Uh, whenever you give the uh, first goal as the show uh, component, uh, this is what I usually do. The output of the first, um, here you can see that if you just give a mesh as an output, you can see the mesh here. Okay, so that is the most important thing, uh, the first step of kangaroo. Okay, the next thing is we can say a goals, uh, and there is a goals uh, co-planner. This is really great because this can help you to say a series of points have to be planar, and that's the most important goal we have to do. And we can say mesh, deconstruct mesh. And here you can see that each of these n-gon meshes uh, are going to have a series of vertices so if I just zoom in here for example uh, you can see that it has seven vertices uh, six of them are at the corners and also we have the center which is really great because we want to put all of them in one uh, plane that is exactly why we need this coplanar component we just give that to here and use the shift key to add it to the goal object and uh, just a step forward you can see that it's trying to planarize them easily that's really fast and easy you can just planarize them uh, another thing we have to fix here if i look at it from the front is that these points are coming down we need them to be completely on the ground because obviously a dome is going to sit on the ground so that's it, the co-planner is going to fix it, but we need to do uh, additional steps. And just to turn this everything off. And let's go and play around with the points at the bottom. Uh, we can go to the kangaroo mesh and use this naked vertices, which is a great tool. And it's going to give you a series of points. Uh, clothed and naked. The naked points are the points we see on the ground. So we want to say that they are always going to be in one plane and we don't want them to go up and down. Uh, okay, uh, the problem here if I use the uh, goals co-planner is it's going to try to keep these points in a plane. So assume we look at it from uh, the front 
and these are the points to just move them slightly up and down and it's going to move them uh, to make it a, a coplanar but the problem is maybe the plane is a little bit slightly down or up okay so it's going to just bring them like this and the dome is going to sit it like uh, on an inclined surface so we don't have any option of pl uh, defining the plane for this coplanar thing uh, that's why we go to the goals on and we're going to use the goals on plane okay so I'm going to say keep these points on a given plane for the plane I can just pick uh, just one of them to say that that's the plane so I'm going to go to sets list item and just pick one of that and uh, if you connect an XY plane to this obviously this is uh, let me let me make that plane a little bit bigger preview plane size 10 and that's going to be the plane so we can just use the shift key and add that to the goals too and now you can see that this is going to put the dome exactly on the ground before we connect this on plane you can see that it's going up and down and when we add this it's going to sit on the ground and uh, now it's completely flat okay now that we have the mesh let me just turn off everything what we need here is the n-gons again because they have been converted into triangular mesh uh, we can go to the mesh and use this mesh edges it's going to give us naked edges and interior edges obviously we just need the naked edges uh, so here you can see that the naked edges uh, have different like number of edges six and what we have to do is to join them together curve join curve and uh, from the params menu geometry I'm going to pick up a surface and connect that to it so if it's flat it's always going to give you a good surface because if it's not uh, you can see an error here because it, because it can't convert any curve to surface so that's obviously a way that you can see if it's flat or not another way is to go to curve analyzes and see if it's planar and we can test that and let's just I'll put two forward slash as a panel to the planar and as you can see here it's true that it's a planar I'm going to flatten all the outputs so they are all in one output okay because true is one uh, what we can do here is to connect a number to this and then as you can see here this means all all of them are flat okay if I connect a boolean from here before I give it to an integer and right click and invert it it's going to go to false obviously this is going to uh, say how many of them are not planar then we can go to the math and say mass addition and as you can see here this is going to be how many are non planar okay so this is non planar n-gons so that's it now we can also uh, show them with a color if I want to I can go to the display custom preview and I usually use this params gradient preset green and red so the green is zero because the lower limit is zero the upper limit is one which is red and then we have to just give a parameter here which is going to be uh, curve analyzes planar deviation I'm going to flatten this because we need all of those numbers in one place and then give it to the parameter which is going to always be green okay and then give that to the Geometry because this is flat uh, flattened I have to also flatten this one that is correct so if I just change this color to something else this is going to be defined as flat okay so anyway this is good and you can see that it's completely flat we also have the deviation here so if I just give it to here you can see this is like zero uh, you can go to math and add them up another way to check it out and this is the total deviation okay so uh, one way was uh, total deviation
okay okay thanks for watching remember to like this video subscribe to our channel so you get notified about our new video tutorials and see you next time bye